So are you serious about becoming a better network engineer? Are you going to become better than others around you or others in the industry? In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Linux commands on Cisco iOS devices so that you can do things that others don't know how to do. In a previous video, which I've linked here and below, I showed you how to enable or use Linux commands by running a single command on a Cisco iOS device. I'm not talking about dropping into a Linux shell or running a virtual machine on a Cisco device. By simply typing one command on a Cisco iOS device, you can run Linux commands such as grep, man, more, and many others. You can also run scripts on Cisco iOS devices. So in other words, you can run Linux scripts directly on the device by enabling a single command. Now, this video is a continuation of the previous video and additional videos that I've created. I wanted to add scripting to this video, but the video's got too long. So in this video, I'm gonna answer some questions. I'm also gonna address some feedback that I've received about showing you additional options available uh, through these commands. These commands are available as part of the Cisco iOS shell. You don't need to run anything fancy to use these commands on Cisco iOS. It's available on traditional Cisco iOS as well as additional platforms such as iOS XE. Now I'm gonna ask you a favor. If you find this video useful, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like this video. Click the bell to get notifications so that you know when I upload videos like this. Change your life today. Spend time going through this video and learning things that other network engineers don't know so that you can amaze a senior network engineer when they see what you can do, or you can amaze someone when you go for an interview. Learn these commands and set yourself apart from others. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. Don't believe people who tell you that you can't use Linux commands such as grep or man or more on Cisco iOS. You can on traditional Cisco iOS. Now, this feature is available from version 15.1 of Cisco iOS. It's been around for a long time. This document, as you can see, was first published in March 25, 2011. So it's been around for a long time. But you do need version 15 or later of Cisco iOS. I've got, in this GNS3 topology, a traditional Cisco iOS switch and iOS router, but I've also got a XE router. So this is a Cisco CSR. Now, if you're not sure what that is, this is classic or traditional Cisco iOS that's been around for many years. Now, if you've used traditional devices such as 3750 switches or 2800 routers and so forth, this is the iOS that we're talking about. So in this example, this switch is using vIOS layer two. This router is a Cisco iOS V router. So show version on the router. Notice it's running vIOS or iOS V. That's the version of iOS but this CSR router is running iOS XE. So notice virtual XE software. Notice the difference here, x86 64-bit Linux. Wikipedia has a decent explanation of what Cisco iOS XE is. It's basically the new iOS. The problem with traditional Cisco iOS is it's monolithic. There were so many features in it that it became very difficult to manage or to develop on. Traditional Cisco iOS supports things such as IPX, Apple Talk from many, many years ago. Some of those features have been removed, but what you'll find is a lot of features still exist in the monolithic traditional classic Cisco iOS. This version of iOS was developed for the ASR 1000 series routers and the big thing to note is it's built on Linux. So rather than just having Cisco iOS running directly on a switch or router, we have Linux running, and then the iOS runs as a separate process on top of Linux. And that's why you can drop down to a Linux shell in Cisco iOS XE. Now, why am I telling you this? Because one of the questions I got asked is, is this Linux feature supported on XE. 
And the answer is yes. But I'm not just going to show you that. I'm going to show you an answer to another question as well. One of the questions was from a number of people was, David, does it use a lot of CPU? Does it use a lot of memory to enable this feature? And I want to show you that there are two ways to set this up. You can either use the terminal option or you can use the configuration option. The configuration option is the option that I showed you in the previous video, where I said shell processing full. That is actually what they recommend. Basically, that feature is then enabled on the device, but you don't have to do it that way. You can enable it just for the current terminal. So back in my GNS3 topology, what I'll do is I'll do this on XE. So notice if I type show run, pipe grep, and let's say face, it tells me that grep is not a supported command. But if I enable terminal shell, that feature will be available on this device. So show run, pipe grep, face. Notice that works. If I exit out of the console, so I've exited out of the console in this example and go back into the console and type show run, pipe grep, face, notice the command is no longer supported. So again, if I type terminal, and there's a bunch of options here, but let's say shell, and then run that command again, notice it works. But as soon as I exit out of the shell, that command no longer works. So I'm only enabling this for the current terminal. So if you're concerned about you know, processing power, memory utilization, just enable it on your current terminal. It'll only work for the current terminal, and then it'll stop working once you, once you exit your terminal. Now, I haven't seen any information saying that this will use a lot of memory or take a lot of CPU power. You're basically just extending the commands that the device can support. Okay, so they have answered two questions. Is it supported in XE? Yes, it is. Is it supported on traditional iOS? Yes, it is. Can you enable it just for the current terminal? Yes, you can. So if you're concerned about leaving this running, only enable it for your current terminal. So if you're working on the device, and you type that command, you'll be able to do things that a engineer who doesn't know about this won't be able to do. So they'll see you using commands that you know doesn't work for them because you've just enabled the terminal shell on your current shell. So that's quite nice to know. Now, someone else commented, David, you should have shown that grep doesn't have to be case sensitive. So let me show you that. Firstly, on a switch, if I type show run pipe include face, this is not using the Linux commands. This is just include. Notice that works, but if I say face with uppercase, it doesn't work because this is case sensitive. So the traditional include exclude commands use regular expressions and they case sensitive. Now the same is true if I use grep here. Notice show run pipe grep face, that works but if I use face, uppercase, it's not gonna work. Okay, I'm getting a duplex mismatch in my GNS3 topology. I'll quickly fix that. So duplex full on the router, go back to the switch. Notice this doesn't work. So show run, pipe grip, face, uppercase doesn't work. Not going to work in this example. But if I say dash i, notice it does work because I'm saying ignore case. Now, if you're not sure about commands, simply use man. So use the man pages or manual pages. So man and the specific command, and notice dash i or hyphen i, ignore case. So that's really nice. If you're not sure about, you know, is it uppercase or is it lowercase, or if you just want to ignore case, then use dash i makes it a lot simpler in many ways to search for text. Now, once again, to see the functions available, use the command show shell functions. So I'll just do that again. Show shell functions shows you the various functions available. And here's a nice one. Number the lines in the input. If I type show run, traditionally I can use this command, show run line number. That shows me lines next to the running configuration. 
that doesn't work as an example with the command show IP route. So notice show IP route line number. The switch is doing a domain lookup here. It works with show run, but doesn't work with IP route. So I'll just type no IP domain lookup. So we don't have that happening again. So again, notice show IP route line number doesn't work. Show IP route question mark. A lot of options here, but no options for line number. But what I can do is say pipe NL. And notice I get a line numbers next to the output. Now this switch is learning a lot of routes from the router. So perhaps you don't want to do it that way. You probably want to push this to more so you can see one page of output at a time. Or you may want to push this to a file so that you don't have so much output displayed. So rather than doing it that way, I'm going to say pipe more. Notice I get one page at a time, and I can use spacebar to go through the output or simply use Q to quit. So just quit out of that if I don't want to see the entire configuration. What's nice about this is I could say grep for, let's say, 70. So show me line 70. But I may just want to see a line that begins with 70. So caret means beginning of line. This is basic regular expressions. So that could be quite useful. You can now use line numbers on any command. So show IP interface brief shows me a list of interfaces on the switch. I can point that to NL to get line numbers. So I'll just make this a bit bigger. So notice I see line numbers. And what you could do is when you're talking to someone else, say, go and have a look at line number 20 as an example. Now, again, I'm just using very basic examples here. Use your imagination to think about what you could use this for. I could, as an example, once again, say, grep, carrot, beginning of line, let's say 20. Have a look at line 20. So if you and I were discussing a configuration, I could say, use this command and go and look at the specific line in the output of any command, and then let's discuss that command, rather than trying to look for a command in a long running configuration or in a big routing table or something, we can narrow it down to a specific line. Now, you can also do this. So show IP interface brief, and let's do sort. That just sorts the output. Notice this is typically at the beginning. So show IP interface brief, we have interface, IP address, method, status, protocol first, but you could sort the output if you like, and then push that to more. So if you wanted to sort output alphabetically, you could do that. Let's do a funny one with show run. So typically show run looks like this. There's a standard show run, but what I'll do is sort that alphabetically And as you can see, the output is just being dumped. So I should have pushed that to more once again. So let's push that to more. And notice BGP is the first command. Then we've got IP, then login, then media type. Goes all the way down to to VLAN. So I've been able to sort the output. So if you wanted to sort something alphabetically, you could do that rather than trying to look for something. But I mean, there are perhaps better ways of doing this. You could just, for instance, grep for something. And in this case, I've used the wrong word. So let's say VLAN, grep for VLAN. Now I've got to ask this because this is YouTube. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click on the bell to receive notifications when I post a new video. And please put comments below this video. You know, tell me, did you find this video useful? Have you got ideas of things that you can do with what, I, with what you've learned in this video?